What's going on YouTube? It's Sean here and I'm back today to give you guys a review of the Nike LeBron 17 in the Future Air colorway. These dropped on September 27th for a retail price of 200 USD or 260 Canadian dollars. The official colorway for this shoe is white, tech gray, and quasar purple. So I'm going to tell you guys straight off the bat, I did not wear these on the basketball court. I don't intend to because I've just never been a fan of LeBron shoes on court. I personally prefer shoes with a lot more ground feel and stability. So with that said, I'm not going to be wearing these on the court, but I'm definitely going to be rocking these casually. And myself being a fan of LeBron James in general, this being his 17th signature sneaker from Nike, I had to pick it up and try it out for myself. So first things first, here's a quick look at the box. So as you guys can tell, these come in their own special edition box. This is pretty much all done in black. On the top lid, we have LeBron 17 done in gold foil. And then underneath this, if you guys can see, there's an image of a lion. And then on the front of the box, we have LeBron's crown logo right here, along with the label that reads LeBron 17 LMTD, which I assume stands for limited. So jumping back to the shoes, these LeBron 17s were designed by Jason Petrie and he built upon the battle knit that was featured on the uppers of the LeBron 15 and 16, creating this all new tech called Knit Posit. So Knit Posit is a combination of fly knit with heat molded yarns, resulting in a very durable and supportive upper. Essentially what Nike did was combine the appearance of the LeBron 15's battle knit with the strength and durability of the battle knit 2.0 on the 16th. So jumping straight into these shoes, as you can tell the forefoot area of this shoe, so this is made out of an unstructured fly knit upper. When I say this, I mean that there is no TPU overlays or anything like that, which results in this toe box being much more flexible than compared to the rest of the knit and the back of the shoe. As we move on to the midfoot of the lateral side of the shoe, here's where we see the introduction of the knit posit. So you can see all these random shapes of yarn that are heat pressed, and how Jason Petrie describes this is that it's essentially like a jewel-like armored exoskeleton that's stuffed with these yarns. So if you take a closer look at this, you'll see there's a wide array of essentially swirls of yarn, which gives each shoe a very unique look. In addition to the appearance, this knit posit is actually quite sturdy as well. So the more we move towards the back end of the shoe, the larger these knit posit segments become, giving you more and more durability and structure the further back you go. So on the very back heel, you'll see the largest segments of this knit posit are found back here. Hanging off the back of the shoe, there's this hang tag as well, which is done in this iridescent finish. And we have this LeBron crown logo on one side and the words removed before launch on the other. Surrounding the bottom of the back heel, here we have this TPU heel counter, which is done in this milky but semi-translucent finish. On the lateral side, we have this protruding iridescent Nike swoosh. And then you'll see this heel counter also wraps around the medial side as well. In terms of laces, so the laces are a flat style white lace but they're tucked behind this shroud that's found on the tongue. So this piece that covers the tongue is very interesting and arguably the most visually striking piece about this shoe. So this is a bit translucent so you can kind of see the laces underneath. And we also have this diagram or like a blueprint image of the LeBron Lion. This entire tongue cover has an iridescent finish to it. So while it mainly looks blue, in certain angles it changes from yellow to green to purple and so on and so forth. At the very bottom, we also have the LeBron crown logo stitched on as well. On the back of the tongue, we have this patch and it reads engineered to the exact launch specifications of LeBron R. James. So the interior of the LeBron 17s is pretty heavily padded and it's done in this orange color. And then as I pull out the insole, here we have this very padded orange colored insole with this graphic of the cushioning systems found within this model. So the upper of the LeBron 17s sits atop this midsole that's done in a combination of two different types of cushioning. So underneath the heel, Nike has incorporated the largest Nike Air unit ever found on any LeBron sneaker. Underneath the forefoot, we have this layer of white foam. And then beneath this, we have these two independent Zoom Air pods underneath the forefoot. So while the Zoom Air unit on the lateral side is sort of covered in this translucent rubber, on the medial side, however, you can really see the fibers of the Zoom Air bag on this end. Turning the shoe over to the bottom, so here we have your outsole. So this is a very interesting looking outsole. It's basically entirely covered in this semi-translucent rubber. And the traction pattern on this shoe, at least in my opinion, sort of resembles the mesh of a basketball hoop. Underneath the heel, you can see how the rubber sort of loops around. And it leaves the foam padding in the middle exposed with LeBron James signature. And then on the forefoot, you can see those two independent Zoom Air units that are slightly colored in orange. And we also have Nike branding found at the very tip of the toe. In addition, Nike also incorporated this small outrigger to help prevent rolling your ankles. And this is found on the Zoom Air unit on the forefoot, 
as well as a small outrigger also found on the maxer unit on the heel as well. So in terms of sizing, my feet measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side. And for recent LeBron models like the LeBron 15 and 16, for both those models I got a size 10 as well. In the case for the LeBron 17s, I feel like they do run a little bit snug. So I got these in my true size, size 10. And even when I'm wearing casual socks, they're already pretty snug. So I really had to unlace them and relace them up in order for them to fit more comfortably and accommodate my wider foot. If you guys are going to be playing ball in these, I would probably recommend going up a half size, especially if you're going to be rocking Nike Elite socks or just a thicker pair of socks in general. And while I mentioned from the start that the flyknit on the toe box was very flexible, I wouldn't say that it's stretchy because there is this underlying layer which prevents the knit from expanding too much. Best bet, I would recommend trying them on in store if you can, not necessarily this colorway but either the Laker colorway or the Oreo colorway, just to get a better sense of how they fit on you. Next up, from a comfort standpoint, so again, I want to stress this was not actually worn on court and this is not a performance review. However, from strictly a casual use standpoint, first off, the LeBron 17s, you feel really, really high off the ground. That's really the first thing that I noticed when I wore these. And I gotta say, this shoe is a little bit stiffer than I expected. Obviously, because I'm not playing ball in them, I'm not jumping, I'm not running. So with that said, I'm obviously not using the technology on this shoe for its purpose. However, in just rocking these casually, the airbag underneath the heel was definitely stiffer than, for example, the airbag found on the Air Max 720. And even the Zoom Air pods on the forefoot, they felt a little bit stiff as well. Maybe this could just be a case of breaking them in, or maybe they're just going to be like that for just casual use. But the one positive thing that I liked was, despite having these two different technologies on the forefoot and the back heel, unlike for example the React 270 that I reviewed not too long ago, for a model like that, with two different technologies on that shoe, the heel to toe transition felt very awkward, and you can really feel the contrast of the stiff heel with the soft forefoot. In the case for these LeBrons, I didn't feel that at all, and I feel Nike Basketball did a very good job in creating a seamless transitional experience on foot. So with all that out of the way, now I'll show you guys how these Future Air LeBron 17s look on feet. From the colorways we've seen so far of the LeBron 17s, so that would be probably this one, the Laker colorway, and the Oreo colorway, these feature airs so far are my favorite. Visually speaking, it's very striking how it's a predominantly white or pale gray upper, and then Nike throws on this vibrant orange along with, of course, the crazy tongue. These are definitely going to be head turners both on the court and off the court. To me, even though modern day basketball shoes aren't really worn off court these days, I might just be one of the few that are the exception to the rule, and you're definitely going to be seeing me rock these, at least until the snow starts falling. Comparing this to some of the other models like LeBron 15 and 16, personally I still prefer the feel of LeBron 15s, specifically the softness of the cushioning, and the softness of the upper as well. However, from a design standpoint, I gotta say that these LeBron 17s are actually very very nice, and with the introduction of Knit Posit, I'm very excited to see all the different color combinations they can do, and hopefully pay homage to other iconic colorways of the LeBron line. So let me know in the comment section down below how you guys feel about these LeBron 17s in the future Air colorway. Did you guys pick up a pair? Are you guys feeling the look of the LeBron 17s? Whether you love it or hate it, let me know down below. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Give me a follow on my Instagram at sgo8. Check out my Twitter at sean.go and visit my website at seango.ca. So until next time, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.